Hi, everybody. If you're here, you're an educator, uh, you're a teacher, or administrator, uh, maybe an assistant uh, principal or something like that. Um, and you're looking for help for Google Meet. Uh, my name is Spencer Campbell. I'm a former teacher, now administrator, recording this video for not only our staff, but teachers and educators across the country that are trying to uh, work with kids from home. Um, it's a crazy time. It is a crazy time. Uh, to be an educator. Uh, but as always, we rise to the occasion and we do uh, more than we're asked and we we do things on the fly and we change things. Um, so never more, right, probably than now, um, has a video conferencing tool been uh, in need? Um, and so today we're going to talk about Google Meet and how you can use that in your classroom, how you can use that as a leader, um, how you can use that in your team PLCs, uh, to you know, kind of be at home and have virtual meetings and different things like that. Uh, the tool that we're going to go over today is going to be uh, Google Meet, uh, which at some point will be combined with Google Hangouts. Um, it is available on pretty much any um, device and browser. You do not have to have a Google account. Uh, if you're an educator and you have the G Suite or the Google Apps, uh, your district has to basically open that up for you. Our district has. And so um, what uh, what I'm going to do is just show you how to use that today. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can actually go to Google Meet and start a meeting. The first way is in the browser. If you just type in meet.google.com, just right there in the web browser. And it will bring you to this moment in time. Uh, or on the screen. And so what you'll do is you'll actually join or start a meeting at that point. If you're starting a meeting, you will be the first one in the room. And it basically creates a virtual meeting room uh, where you and your team or you and students um, can meet and you can explain, you can teach, you can talk, um, you can you know go back and forth. There's also chat enabled. There's also just a call in as well. Um, if you If somebody's not available to meet on their computer or phone, um, there is an, an app as well that you can meet on the phone. And so obviously normally I would have something on the green screen behind me, but um, because of the timeliness of this, we just wanted to put it up um, and help out. So to start a meeting, what you're going to do is you're going to click join or start a meeting. And here you would name the meeting, right? And so here I will just put that in tutorial meeting. After you've created the meeting, you're going to have some some options here. And again, no one else can join yet um, until you join as the um, as the as the host, right? And what you'll be able to see though is you'll have some options here uh, for your microphone and your cam camera. Most computers now will have a camera built in, and sometimes you maybe want be using a third party mic, a USB mic, or something that's plugged in. And the way that you change that is you go to the three dots here. And you can turn on captions, which is great for, for uh, students maybe with an IEP or um, uh, students that, are, that have disabilities that they need to read through things on the screen, right? Um, and then your settings here is it's going to pull up another small window that will give you the option for your microphone and your camera. Obviously, I'm using the built-in microphone on my MacBook, and then I'm using the uh, built-in video. If I click here, you'll have the option to change the resolution. I can go high definition if I high definition if I would like, or if I would prefer that. If you're using an outside uh, of your computer uh, or outside of the computer, um, it would obviously plug in. The settings would change with that if it was 1080 or 4K for that um, recording. Once you're done with that, you would change here. Now, what you'll have the option to do is before we jump in here is I'm actually using my school account, right? So that's that's the account that is is connected with these meet. You'll notice right here in the browser is I have a unique ID. It's also here. Each meeting has a unique ID, but that unique ID can stay there if it's an ongoing meeting. And so it's usually a um, 10 digit code, right? There's three and then a dash, then four, then a dash, and then three letters. That's the link that you would send out to anybody to join your Google Meet. And so you can actually send this to somebody that's on a uh, phone. You can send it through a text message. You could send it through a Skype. You can send it through, obviously, email. You can also invite specific people in your organization um, that have access to the, um, the, the G Suite, right? So we have 55,000 students in our district. 
there are you know 5,000 plus teachers. When I start inviting a teacher into this, um, it's going to pull up all of the teachers in our district um, and so that I can invite them. Um, or I can send out the code in an email. Now, what would this look like in a classroom? I can send this link. I can put it in Google Classroom. I could put it in something like Canvas or um, some other sort of learning management software or learning management tool. And that link, then the students could jump in and we could meet um, in that process, right? Um, now it does get into, you know, if it's just, you don't want to be meeting with a student one-on-one, -on -one, obviously you want to have multiple students or multiple adults. If you're meeting with a student in their home, hopefully that their parent is there, that they're in on that conversation as well. You wouldn't ever want to meet with a child one-on-one. -on -one. There is an option to record those meetings or these recorded meetings, um, so that you kind of have a record of everything that you've done. The great thing about that is if you're doing some tutorials or some lessons, you can actually post those later and students or people that are unable to attend that meeting can come back and, and look at all the proceedings of that meeting prior or after the fact that it's happened. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on join the meeting. So when I join the meeting, there's some information here that's really helpful, right? I have a dial in option. So somebody can actually dial in from their phone. I was actually part of one the other day where I was driving home and I couldn't necessarily get on the video on my phone because I was driving through some area um, where the internet's not as good. So I dialed in with a pin and I could hear the audio of a meeting that was going on. You'll see that right there. There's a dial in and then there's the pin. What you'll also see is we have this same code here, here, and here, right? So this is the first way that you can start a Google meeting um, here. If I wanted to copy this and send it over to a clipboard or some other document like a Google Doc or into Google Classroom or again into Canvas or something else that I'm using with my students, I could copy all that information it would go there. I can add people directly. Um, so you'll see my most recent emails, right, of people that I've joined meetings with. I can add them as well. Um, and then the meeting has now started. Now, I'm the only one in the meeting. You can see up here uh, in this grid view that I'm the only one here. I'm going to move this picture in picture out here just a little bit right there. It's weird seeing three of you on the same screen. It's kind of meta. So that's the first way is to actually go to meet.google.com. The other way, which you're probably familiar with, right, is in your um, Gmail suite, right, is if you go to um, gmail.com and up in the top right hand corner, you're going to see your little waffle here and then you can click on Google Meet here. It's the same thing. If I actually click join a meeting, it would join this meeting that we're currently in already. So we're not going to do that. The other great thing is you can actually go through your calendar. So if I go through my calendar and I pick a day and I wanna add a new event, uh, I'm gonna go to the more options tab. In your calendar, you'll see the conferencing option right here. And I can actually put a meeting and schedule it in advance for anybody they want. So it's like a normal event that you're in in Google Calendar. And when I click on Hangouts Meet, you'll notice because it's a new meeting at a different date, my little 10 um, letter code has changed. And so that would be a new meeting uh, that's in the future. Any guests that I add to this meeting would be invited to that meeting. And you can set specific dates and times and lengths and different things like that. So those are the three different ways that you can get into a Google Meet. One is just by going to meet.google.com. The other is going through the waffle, right? It's what we call it, or the nine square box, depending on who you are. We call it the waffle, go to meet, or you can do it through the calendar. So I'm actually gonna close all those and we'll go into some of these options here. Um, again, I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit, shrink my screen um, here so you can see it. Move this out of the way. So there's a couple different views. Obviously you can see that I've turned on captions. It'll record my voice um, and turn that into text. And so for those students or educators that need um, text, it does a really good job of picking up voice to text. So I'm actually gonna turn those off so they'll stop. I just wanted to show you as we were doing this period. And I will turn those off. Now, um, again, 
here. I have all of my meeting information here by clicking down here. I can mute myself here. So I'm going to turn off my microphone. You'll hear it for a second. It'll mute myself. I am now muted. I am talking, but you can't hear me. And there, I'm going to pull that up again. I can also turn off my camera here. And then it just pulls that. You can still hear the audio here. I can turn on captions. We'll get to this present now button in just a second. I want to go into more details here um, as we stretch this out. So you can see here. Now over here on the bottom, um, right hand corner you have these three dots this will give you more options as far as your uh, google meeting goes and what you can do with that meeting so i can record the meeting um, i would start recording right at the beginning obviously and the reason i didn't show you that is because we are going through this together as a tutorial but that recording will actually be saved straight to your drive under your google meet tab in your folders in drive it's organized that way the great thing about that is, is then you can share it out to everybody again as a document or upload it or download it or do whatever you need to for that time. I can also change my layout, what this looks like. So you're going to have three different layouts. You're going to have a sidebar where everybody on the right hand side of your Google Meet will be lined up there on the right. You'll have a spotlight where maybe there's just one presenter and everybody's listening, right? You'll have the other option is where it's tiled. Once you get a lot of people in, the tile actually gets really kind of crazy and everybody gets really, really small. And you'll also have auto. And what we discovered with auto is auto jumps to whoever's talking. So if people have muted themselves, they can unmute themselves and talk. They will jump up to the front of the screen. Now, since I'm the only one here, it, it's not going to show you those other screens. Again, our options, we can go full screen which is this, then it pulls everything out. And if you're on a Mac, right, and you do the four finger slide, you're gonna see my little picture here again in my desktop and then now here. So that's a little bit too much and a little bit too big. So I'm gonna exit full screen. We're gonna come here and I'm going to, I can turn on captions here as well. I can go into further settings, which is basically gonna go back to the settings that I had before, which is my audio and my video, okay? Um, I can also use a phone for audio. Now, I don't want to do that right now because it'll screw up the test recording. But if I wanted to call in, if for whatever reason I'm not connected to the internet, I could do that as well. Now, the great thing about Google Meet is you have the ability to present your screen. And what's going to happen is the moment that I present my screen, um, it's going to, and I'm just going to open this up to ESPN so we can see, right? Um, and I'm going to pull this down and make it a full page over here. So um, I can then present my screen. And, the, and, and what's different about this is if you've been on other screen, basically sharing tools or devices where you're doing meetings, is it will hide that. And so it doesn't look like you can see your screen, but your screen is showing. So when I click present now, I'm going to just tell you what happens before. I'm going to have two guests in the meeting. There's going to be another picture right up here that's going to be whatever screen I want to show you. So when I click on present now, my entire screen or a window. So if I do a window, it's going to pull up my windows. So this one here is the one that we're in. There's the Google Hangout meeting here. I could do either of those if I wanted to. Okay. Or, and this is going to get really meta, right? Is if I want to do my entire screen, it'll show everything that's on my current screen. And it'll again, it'll show you all the things. So now you're going to see a picture and 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 a picture, and a picture forever, right? Um, so we'll just do this. I'm going to do present now. I'm going to do a window. And we're just going to do this window right here. So what you'll notice is on my Mac, because I'm recording my screen, you're going to get a notification here that says, hey, you're still presenting to everybody. Are you sure you're OK with that? Yep, I am. I'm going to hit close. The screen that is presenting to everybody is here, right? And every time I rotate back and forth, you'll see that that's here. Now, what you'll see here is, again, like I told you, is we have two guests in the meeting. They're not, there's not actually two people here. There's me. And then there's the screen that I'm presenting. And that shows up here. And you can see if I zoom in really close um, here, it's just actually faded out a little bit. And there's no audio here. If we were to pick up second audio on that screen, what would happen is we'd start to get this reverb echo feedback loop going in with all of the um, audio. 
when you have completed the meeting, right? Or when you've stopped presenting, you can hit stop presenting and then I'll jump back up on the main screen again. I would go to options before I stopped and hit stop recording, right? And then I would uh, stop recording that meeting. And then it would take a bit, a little bit, a little bit to process and it would come back through in again, my Google drive into the videos there. And then I could share that out with anybody that I wanted. Now, some of the ideas that we've seen behind this, right? Um, obviously, if you have a student and a family that you need to have an IEP with over the phone at this point, because we're not meeting in, pe in person, this could happen over the phone or it could happen over a video conference. If we have individual students or groups of students that need remediation or they need extra help on different things, you can go in and do math problems. We've seen this with our teachers. They're doing art problems. We have a ceramics teacher who's doing stuff from home. We have an art teacher who's basically flipping her screen on her iPad and showing students how to do artwork through Google Classroom. There's a lot of different ways and there's there's people out there that have been doing this a lot longer than I have that have a lot of different ways that you could um, uh, present or, or teach students, right? And the part of this is interactive. Sometimes students just want to get on at this point now and see your face and ask questions and they need help with maybe some logistics, right? For most of our kids, uh, this is the first time they've ever done a lot of digital homework from home using Canvas or Google Classroom or whatever LMS software that you have. And so maybe just walking them through things and recording it, right? And then placing that back in. So then if other kids have questions, they can go back in and watch that video or you have a place to point them to so you're not doing that multiple times. Um, another great way, I mean, our math team at our school did this today is everybody was in their home, own home and they got together and met together and had basically a conference about, okay, what do we wanna do? Um, and the reason that happened is because we just found out yesterday we're gonna be out for another four and a half weeks. Um, uh, and so they're trying to kind of put together a plan of what that's going to look like. They're not the only team that's, did, that's done that. Um, but if I'm an administrator and I have something that I need to meet with a teacher about that we can't talk about on the phone or I want to see them in person so they can kind of get what I'm talking about or I need to show them something, um, I can do that, right? We have a lot of new young teachers that have never done stuff online. And so in our school, we're looking at how do we help them be successful by making this transition to online school for the next four and a half weeks, right? Uh, so those are some of the ways that, that we plan on using this tool. I, again, I appreciate uh, your support for watching this YouTube video. Uh, if this has been valuable to you um, and you've learned something, obviously hit subscribe wherever you hit subscribe. It's been a long time since I've done YouTube videos. Uh, I used to do one every day for my class and uh, it's fun to get back on. I appreciate you as a teacher or as an educator and what you're doing at this current time. Um, even though you're not teaching my kids or in our district, if you're outside of our district, we love you, we appreciate you, and we are glad that you're doing what you do.